that time is greater than money, then what you'll do is instead of trading time for money, you'll exchange as much money as necessary to get back the rest of your time. And really, this is the formula. Time is not money. Time is greater than money. And if we understand that, then we'll really focus on creating the kind of results we want in our life by going out instead of exchanging this for this, we'll exchange this for this. But in order to go out and exchange money to buy back your time, you got to first have some money. So the question is, the question is, where are you going to get this money? Where are you going to get the money, all the money that you want to pay for your children's education, to, to have a great retirement, to buy the house of your dreams, to drive the car of your dreams, to be able to help the family members and the friends you want to help, and to be able to contribute to the charities you want to contribute to. Where are you going to get that money? I think that's a great question. Where are you going to get that money? So I'm going to tell you where the money is at. And, and this money, all the money that you want right now, all, all the money you want right now that you don't have. So this is money you want, but you don't have it. All the money that you want right now and you don't have, it's in somebody else's pocket. So somebody has the money. Now here's what I found out. I found out if you will give people value in the form of results they want, they will give you money in exchange for that. So. I, I, I like to call this concept of value exchange. In other words, people will only pay you, see if, if, if you're in the market looking to make more money, then, then what's valuable to you at that particular moment is the money. But sometimes there are things that are more valuable to us than money. For instance, when our car is running on, on fumes, we go to the gas station, gas is more important than money. When, when our body's running low on fuel and we're hungry, then we, we spend money for food because the food's more important than the money. Well, at any given time, there are millions of people all around you in, in your local area and places all around the world that have a desire in their life for a result or for value in the form of a result, then that result they want is greater a greater desire for them than the money they have. And they're willing to exchange the money they have for that result. So what you want to do is you want to become a value-added proposition who produces results that other people want, and then they give you money. Now, if value is the, the thing that people really want, they want value in the form of results, if that's really what they're after, and they are, and you go out and give them that value in the form of results, they'll happily give you money. Now, there are, I want you to understand, there are four levels of value creation. There's four levels of value. And let's say this star represents the result you want. This is your result. This is, this is your result. This is money. Let's say it's money. Let's say it's retirement. Well, let's say it's money for retirement. Let's say it's money for your kid's college. Let's say it's money for your dream home. Money for whatever. Money for the lifestyle that you desire right now while you're still working. This result that you want is, you want this result manifested. So you want to manifest, you want to manifest a result. Now, don't let that word scare you because the word manifest literally means to make it show up in your hand. That's what the word actually means. It has the idea, if you can imagine this with me, it has the idea of reaching through the curtain that separates the visible world from the invisible world and then grabbing something and bringing it back into the physical. So the manifestation is the ability to take something that only exists right now in the invisible realm and bring it back and make it show up in your hand in the physical world. By the way, everything that gets here gets here through manifestation. Um, this, this flip chart was one it's nothing more than an idea in somebody's head, which means it only existed in the invisible world, and somebody created a process that made this show up in their hand, and then they sold it to me, and now it showed up in my hand. So, so it doesn't matter whether we're using, talking about the camera that I'm using to shoot this video, or whether we're talking about this marker, or the easel, the flip chart, it doesn't matter. Everything that is was once just an idea in somebody's mind, which means it existed in the invisible realm first before it showed up in the physical realm which is what manifestation is. Okay, you got that. So, we're going to manifest your result. And the only way for you to manifest your result is for you to produce, for you to produce value and deliver that value to the marketplace. Now, what I want you to understand is there are there are four levels of value. This is the highest level of values right here. 
The second highest level of value is right here. Uh, the third highest level of value is right here. And then the lowest value level of value is right here. And what we have to do, if, we don't, if we're not making much money right now, if we're not producing much money, the reason we're not producing much money in our lives is because as we're delivering this value into the marketplace in the form of results, we are delivering it down here at the lowest possible level. And what I'm going to show you how to do in this video, I'm going to show you how to, instead of just delivering value down here, I'm going to show you how to move up to here, then I'm going to show you how to go from here, because this is you right now if you're broke, you're, you, you live right here. I'm going to show you how to go from here to here, to here, to here, and then once you get here, you can produce, you've got your result. That's called manifestation now. So this lowest level of value, if you're taking notes, the lowest level of value is what I call implementation. Implementation. Implementation is the lowest level of value. And if you're delivering value in the form of implementation right now, you are broke because you are delivering value at the lowest level, therefore you get the least amount of pay. I'm not saying that implementation is not important, and I'm not saying that Myron has decided that implementation is the lowest form of value. We as a global society, human beings all over the world have agreed, whether they know it or not, we've all agreed that implementation is the lowest form of value. And what, what I mean by that that is, the people who are the implementers of a thing are the people who get paid the least amount of money for it because it's the thing we value the least. So I think you can see clearly that implementation is by far the lowest level of value. And like I said, it's not because I say so, but it's because we as a global society have agreed that implementation is the lowest level of value. Let me give you a couple of examples. Um, if you go into a restaurant, the person who owns the restaurant is not washing the dishes. The person washing the dishes performs the implementation of making sure the dishes are clean and none of us want to eat at a restaurant with dirty dishes, but that person makes the least amount of money. The person who um, is cooking the food makes less than the owner. The person who's waiting on the table makes less than the owner because implementation is the lowest form of value. I live in a community here in Florida and the name of my uh, lawn care company that takes care of my lawn is Moen by Bowen. And the guy that owns it, his name is Chris Bowen. And Chris owns a company because his last name is Bowen it's Moen, M-O-W, apostrophe N, by Bowen, B-O-W-N. Well, the interesting thing about Moen by Bowen is the fact that Bowen doesn't do any of the Moen. In fact, the only time I've ever seen Chris Bowen was when he came to my house and talk to me about selling me the service. But what Chris Bowen does, he's a smart enough businessman to know that if he wants to make money as a lawn care guy, he's not gonna make money as a lawn care guy cutting my grass. He's gonna make money as a lawn care guy getting agreements or contracts with individuals that own houses and properties and having paying somebody else a little bit of the money he brings in in order for him to have a successful business where he can multiply his income, what we call scaling in business. He can scale his business because he has people who can implement the task that his business is about. So Chris understands the fact that implementation is the lowest form of value. In fact, the guys that work for Chris probably work for uh, $12, $15 an hour, and he's got four guys that come by and knock out my grass, my neighbor's grass, and a couple of neighbors across the street, and on my street alone, they may do six or seven houses in the space of an hour and a half to two hours, and Chris gets $95 a month um, from all of us, depending on the size of our yards, I guess, but mine's $95 a month. So let's say he gets somewhere between 80 and $150 a month for a yard, and Chris doesn't do any of the implementation. Why? Because he's the owner. And business owners who understand business know they can't operate at the lowest level of value. So what you've got to do is you've got to figure out a way to operate without being the implementer. And if you are the person who implements, who is the doer of the things in your business, you are on the lowest level of value, which means you have the least amount of money in that organization or, want, or amongst the least in that organization. So if you want to move up to the next level of value, that's this step here. This step is the second level of value. So I got one, two, three. Okay, the next level of value is going to be here. So this is the first step. This is the second step. So this is that level. When that level of value is called, that level of value is called unification. And unification, unification is the second highest level, or second lowest level of value. It's, it's the next one up on the ladder. So when you are in unification mode, you are right here. And this is you when you are in unification mode. 
So you're in unification, you're right here, and you are creating wealth at a higher level than this person. Um, these And these people here may be low level implementers, these may be a little higher level implementers, but this first step and below is the implementation. This is unification. And this is where where people reside who are managers. They are they have the ability to unify people, to unify unify groups of implementers into teams who go out and accomplish tasks, and then these unifiers make more money than the implementers. So if you're in management, you make more money than the people who are the implementers. If you have if you have a if you manage a team of people, the people in your team don't make as much money as you. If they're implementers, they make less money than you, and what you've got to do is if you're a unifier and you still don't have enough money, it's because you need to move up to the next level of value. You say, well, Myron, what's the next level of value? Well, understand, unification is so important. Team building is so important. And creating unity, it's important. And one of the reasons people who are unifiers make so much more money is because you, when you're unifying teams, what you're usually doing is you're putting together people who complement each other, which means one has a strength where the other has a weakness. And all of us have strengths and all of us have weaknesses. But here's, I've got news for you about your strength. All strengths have weaknesses. And I've got news for you about your weakness. All weaknesses have strengths. So don't don't lament the fact that you've got weaknesses. And, and don't get too high and mighty about the fact that you have strengths. Because the fact is, all of us have both. So based on the principles of manifestation, you can see that implementation is the lowest form of value. Unification is the second lowest form of value. But the second highest or the next level of value is what I call communication. Communication, commun, communication is the third highest level of value. It's next to the top. There's only one level of value higher than communication. Now, here's what I'm going to tell you. These people right here, these people basically live at the poverty line and below. The implementers of life. They live at the poverty line and below. When I say the poverty line, well, let's just call that $50,000 a year or less. These people right here, the unifiers, they live in the lower middle class to the upper middle class, and we'll call this, we'll call this 80,000 and below. We'll call it less than 100,000. So less than $100,000 a year, less than um, $100,000 a year is, um, or yeah, less than, that's good, that would be greater than, less than 100,000 a year would be these people right here, the unifiers. These people right here, and, and obviously there are unifiers who, in corporate America, who can make multiple six figures, but as a general rule, managers, the manager of McDonald's, let's say, is a unifier. They make more money than the person who says, welcome to McDonald's, can I take your order, please? But they don't make that much more. So that's what I'm talking about. Then we have this level of value right here, which is the second highest level of value. And when you move up to this step, you're, you're making some significant money. You're making six figures plus. Uh, you could be making seven figures plus. You could be making eight figures plus in this level right here called communication. communication is the second highest level of value, and it is by far the easiest way to get into the high levels of income. And when we talk about communication, I'm talking about people like Oprah Winfrey. I'm talking about people like like um, um, David Letterman. I'm talking about people who are who are talking heads, like they're anchors, they're news people, they have their own television shows, the Geraldo Rivera's of the world, people who put together infomercials. These are people who are communicators. I'm talking about I'm talking about people who are in sales. I'm talking about people who are are music artists, people who write movies, people who write books, people who come who have a message, and that message they want to communicate that message into the world these people operate at the second highest level of value in the world, which is why they're some of the top income earners in the world. You can be, I mean, there are people who have become billionaires at this level of value. There are people who become millionaires at this level of value, not very many, but, but certainly millions to billions of dollars live here. And then when you get up to the next highest level, which I'm going to cover in a minute, um, billions of dollars can exist here. And if, if you don't apply the rest of these principles to it, then you can be at operating at the highest level of value, not delivering that value to anyone and not getting anything for it. So, so communication really to me, in my mind, is a focal point. When you get good at communicating um, and taking ideas out of 
of your mind and putting them in other people's mind and giving them the thoughts and clarity. If you can use your words to paint pictures in other people's minds, then you can get, uh, you can manifest anything you want because you can deliver value and you have a way of, of expressing that value so that people say, I want that. So. So, so communication is the second highest level of value. When you learn to operate in here, then you can multiply your income. One of the best places to learn to operate at the communication level is in selling and learning to sell. And I believe that selling is, is an incredible, incredible field that has many, many opportunities, but most people don't like it. Most people really don't like selling. In fact, I would go so far as to say that many people hate it, and most people, when they think about it, it makes them feel yucky. And the reason is because we've been programmed by what I call a cultural hypnotic societal mechanism, which we'll cover on another video sometime in the future. But most people, we've been programmed by the mechanism to hate selling. Why? Well, because it's in our own best interest. And if we begin to learn to sell and we begin to love to sell, then we can pretty much write our own ticket. We can pretty much name our price. We can pretty much, we can pretty much, we'll never be out of work. Selling is the highest um, form of value added ability, one of them on the planet, one of the highest forms of value adding um, ability in the world is the ability to sell. And I want you to think about that. When you think about selling, you don't like it generally, but if you don't, it's simply because you're only reacting to the programming and the ideas that other people put in your head. But the fact is, I'll give you some things to think about, about selling that you've probably never thought about before we go into the highest level of value. And I'm gonna show you how if you operate here at the level of value called selling, that you can create for yourself and for your family the life that others only dream about. So when we look at um, communication and selling, um, before we go any into any detail at all about the idea of selling, we have to define it. Um, because most people, when they think about selling, one of the reasons they don't like it is because of the definition that's been assigned by the powers that be, whether it be the media, the government, uh, our parents, whatever, our teachers, um, have assigned this evil identity to the concept of selling. And what you have to do is you have to realize that selling is really what makes the world go around economically. If you reach into your pocket and you grab, I love don't have my wallet with me, I left it downstairs, but, but if, you, if you reach into your pocket and you take out any amount of money, whether you take out a $100 bill, a $1 bill, if you take out a credit card or a debit card or your checkbook, I want to say this, the only reason any of us ever have any money in our pockets to do any of the things we want to do for ourselves or the people we care about, the only reason any of us ever have any money is because somebody somewhere sold something to someone. That's the only way that anybody has any money in their pocket. If you think about it, it doesn't matter what your job is, your job could not exist without salespeople. It doesn't matter if you drive trucks, if you are a secretary, if you're a janitor, if you're a school teacher, if you work for the government, your job could not exist without salespeople. You could be the CEO, you could be an executive, you could be um, a manager. Your job could not exist without sales. It would not be possible. If you say, no, no, you know, I work at McDonald's and I, I couldn't have a job without selling. No, because somebody at McDonald's Corporation had to sell that franchise to the person who bought it so that you would have a job. No job could exist without selling, which means nobody. If all of the salespeople who have the ability to sell all went on strike tomorrow and said, we're not selling anymore, then the whole economic infrastructure of the world would shut down and come to a screeching halt. The only reason any of us ever have any money in our pockets to do anything is because somebody somewhere sold something to someone. So most people, though, when they think about selling, they think it's talking people into buying something that they don't want, don't need, and can't afford, but that's not selling. I like to define selling like this. Selling is uncovering what I have to offer so well that people are happy to exchange the money they have in their pocket for the value that I've just revealed. I'm gonna say that again. Selling is uncovering the value, uncovering the what? The value of what I have to offer so well that people are happy to exchange the money they have in their pocket for the value I've revealed. And when I get good at uncovering value, then people will happily exchange their money for my value. Now, so when you get good at uncovering value, then you are in the right place at the right time. You have the skill that makes the world go round because none of us would ever have any money in our
our pockets whatsoever if somebody somewhere hadn't sold something to someone. Now, when, we, when we're talking about delivering value, there are a couple of problems or a couple of challenges in the marketplace that I see. When people go into the marketplace, they attempt to sell, they're not good at it. Here's what I found out. The reason they have a hard time selling is twofold. Either they go into the marketplace looking to get value instead of to give value, or they go into the marketplace attempting to give what they perceive as valuable instead of what the marketplace perceives as value. And what I like to share with people is this concept that I call, when you think about your business, don't think of the marketplace, think from the marketplace. In other words, put yourself in their shoes and ask yourself, if I was this person, what would I want? And when you come up with that answer, now you know the message you need to go communicate that, sells, that tells the marketplace, I've got your solution. I've got your result. I've got the result that you want in the, uh, the value you want in the form of this result and I'll give you that in exchange for some of your money and then people will literally throw money at you so fast it'll make your hands spin because it doesn't matter what sector of the marketplace you go into everybody is looking for a result. Doctors are looking for results. Insurance people are looking for results. Car sales people are looking for results. Firemen are looking for results. Uh, teachers and, and, and financial advisors and lawn care specialists and mechanics and whoever, everybody, photographers, videographers, everybody in the marketplace is looking for results. And when you have a result that other people want, people will happily pay you for that result. Now, here's, a, here's another principle that will help it, you make it easier for you to get people to pay you for the, the money you want, for the value they want. Understand this principle. When the, when the value is this big and the price is this big, and the price is this big, they always buy. I said when the value is this big and the price is this big, they always buy. In other words, always over deliver in the value department and when you do, people will always buy from you. All you have to do is be able to communicate the message clearly and succinctly and you will be glad you created that value and communicated it to the marketplace. You must learn how to sell. And I, I, there are other things that you can do. You can write books. That's a great way to communicate. But guess what? Even if you write a book, you've got to get good at communicating a message that causes that book to sell and become a bestseller. Um, I remember when I used to be a trash man, I drove a garbage truck for $6.25 an hour. And that's what I did in the daytime. But you know what I did at night? At night, I sold financial services. At night, I sold insurance. I sold investments. I sold mutual funds. I was licensed in securities. I, I was licensed in insurance. I had my Series 6, Series 63. And I learned financial principles. And I learned learned how money worked. And I learned also how to build a business and I learned how to communicate a message and I learned how to sell. And I was able to go from being a trash man making $6.25 an hour to being a cash man making six and multiple six figures per month. And I'm sure that if you learn how to sell like I've learned how to sell, you can go out and create at least six figures a year or multiple six figures a year for the lifestyle that you deserve and the lifestyle that you desire. But if you're going to do that, you've got to get good at selling. Well, you may be wondering, um, Myron, what's the next highest level of value? The next highest level of value, which is right here, is what I call imagination. Imagination. Imagination is the highest level of value that's delivered into the marketplace. Now you may be thinking, well, imagination, come on. I, the, remember what you used to get in trouble for when you were in school, in elementary school especially, well, at least for me, I got in trouble all the way through school for this, but you get in trouble for daydreaming. Why are you daydreaming? Imagination is where magic happens. It's where, it's where amazing things take place. Because if you think about it, are there limits to implementation? Well, there are limits to implementation. Are there limits to unification? Are there people who will not get along together no matter what you do or no matter what you do? There are. Are there limits to communication? There are, even if it's nothing more than the language barrier. But in the imagination, there are no limits. So this is the highest level of value. This is the level of value where people create value 
And when they create value in this in this level, they make billions with a B. Billions with a B on the front and billions with an S on the end. They make billions in the imagination arena. This is where people conjure up ideas and get other people to communicate those ideas and unify teams of implementers to implement those ideas. And these people go out and they sell it to investors and then they take the company public and sell it back to all of us and they become billionaires. So now, I was, I was recently reading a book um, about Jim Clark, the guy who founded Netscape and, and Healthion and another computer company. This is a guy who founded three multi-billion dollar corporations within a 10 year time period and he did it part time while he was programming the computer on his boat. When I say the computer on his boat, I'm talking about the computer that operated his boat. He wanted to have a boat where computers could do everything. And he spent most of his time programming his computer, but he had communicated a message to some communicators who communicated a message to some unifiers, who communicated a message to some implementers. And these people all worked on his project while he was playing on his boat. This is the highest level of value. This is where the Steve Jobs and the Bill Gates of this world live. If you think about Bill Gates, the wealthiest man in the world, how did he get there? He got there by his imagination because there was a guy who, who implemented a software called Disk Operating System. Bill Gates didn't invent the Disk Operating System. He found a guy who invented this software called Disk Operating System. It's called the Down and Dirty Disk Operating System. Bill Gates bought it from him for $50,000. And by the way, Bill, Bill Gates bought it from him for $50,000 that Bill Gates didn't even have. Bill Gates got the $50,000 from his friend, Paul Allen. He gave Paul Allen part ownership in a company that didn't even exist. So he sold Paul Allen the idea to give him the $50,000 so he could buy this person's implementation. And when he bought the implementation of the disk operating system, he refused to sell it to anybody and agreed to license it to everybody and became the wealthiest man in the world, selling ideas, selling electrons, literally selling a disk and a book. And then he decided to put the book online, and then he just sold the disk. So he sells a disk, a disk that cost him probably 10 cents called Microsoft Windows is what he later developed it to be for $400. If you could take 10 cents and turn it into $400, by the way, you can do that in your imagination, then you can create wealth. Well, you're not gonna jump. This is not gonna happen. You're not gonna jump from here to here. That's not gonna happen. Because if you jump from here to here, even if it could happen, you don't want it to happen because if you jump from here to here, you still can't even communicate your message to communicators to get them to unify people. What you want to do is you want to learn how to go through all of these steps so that you can create value. And what's really beautiful is you can learn these two things at the same time. When you learn selling skills, selling skills, communication skills are really what you need to, in order to unify people. You take people's words and you cause teams to rally around your word. You do that through communication. This is the highest, this is the this is the highest form of value you can deliver in the marketplace. Your fastest path to more cash is going to be improving your ability to communicate and especially improving your ability to sell. So what I want you to understand is this. I, now, I, you may not know me from the man on the moon, but I'll tell you this, I have polio as an infant. I have a brace on my left leg. I walk with a metal brace on my leg. I've never run anywhere. I've, been, I've had a brace on my leg since I've been walking. Well, if you and I got in a race, you would win. If, especially, let's say we're gonna do a mile race. If you and I got in a mile race, and you ran a mile, and I go, it wouldn't be fair for us to go the same distance. So I'll go two miles, you would win. Okay, especially because you don't have a brace and because you're going half the distance. You would win, and this is the key word, unless. You would win unless you were running. Let's call this person running right here. If you were running, and I'm on a bicycle, you would win unless you're running I'm on a bicycle. If I'm on a bicycle, I can beat you in a race. Not only can I go farther, faster, but I can go farther, faster, and use less energy. Why is that important? It's important because all principles are microcosms of each other, and if this is true in distance, it has to be true financially also. And I'll show you what I mean in a minute. But if I give you the bike, and you go two miles, and I go four miles, you're gonna win unless you're on a bicycle, and, and I'm in a car. 
when I get in a car, you're in a bicycle, I'm going to win unless you're on a bicycle. If you're on a bicycle, I'm in a car, I can go twice as far in half the time and use less energy. Why? Because I've got a car and you only have a bike. This is really going to make sense to you. Think about it. A bike has two wheels. These wheels are going to roll in what? In unification. They're going to roll together. It's going to take you farther than your legs are going to take you running, implementing, you doing all the work. Why? You found, you found a machine. You found some leverage called a bicycle. Well, guess what? If I give you the car and you go 50 miles, you go 50 miles, and I go 100 miles, I go 100 miles, then you will win unless what? Unless unless I'm in a plane. And if I'm in a plane, I can go farther, faster, especially on a jet, right? I can go farther, faster, and use less energy. You can go 50 miles, I can go 100 miles, and I can get there twice as fast with half the energy if I'm on a plane and you're in a car. Now you say, Myron, what's your point with that whole illustration? My point is that you can always make up and leverage what you lack in ability. And if you are an implementer of your all of the, if you are the only person working to make your income right now, in other words, all the money you make, you're exchanging some of your time for that money, you are in, impl you are in an implementation mode, you are running financially, which means two things. You're both broke because you can't get to the money fast enough, and you're exhausted because you are the only person bringing that money in. See, what I want you to understand is you can always make up and leverage what you lack in ability. What happens when you become a unifier? Even if you're only managing two people, two people, you're unifying those two people to implement your ideas, you're making more money and doing less work or you're using less effort financially. Why? Because you've learned how to unify. Well, guess what? When you get in a car, you may have a whole bunch of people working on a project for you. You may have people in your in your accounting department and then you've got people that are working in your graphic design department and then people in your IT department and you've got people in your staffing department, and all of these people work together because of your communication, not to mention your sales department. So what happens is when you have these skills and you learn how to communicate a message, here's what's beautiful about selling. If you learn how to sell, it takes no longer to sell a hundred units of a product than it does to sell one. So you literally have the, multi the ability to multiply your income now, I know I've scribbled a lot of stuff on this board and written a lot of things on this board, but I've shared with you some principles I hope that has awakened something inside of you that says to you, that causes you to say, well, you know what? This is really fascinating. I want to learn more. And I created an event, a special event called the One Year Millionaire Live. It's, a, it's an event. It's $1,297. Uh, $1,297. And if you go to OneYearMillionaireLive.com, uh, you can get a ticket there. But I'm going to do something special special for you today and um, so that you can get in One Year Millionaire Live for less than that. So I've created a course. The One Year Millionaire Live, by the way, is was designed to teach you the principles that I've used to make millions of dollars and that my students have used to make millions of dollars. And, and it's a two-day event. It goes from 9 to 9 on Friday, 9 to 9 on Saturday, and it will absolutely explode your mind with ideas that you can take right now, action steps that you can take right now to get on the journey from implementation to unification to communication all the way up to imagination. And to help you get started on that journey, I created a course on selling that's called Sell Your Way to Wealth. That's what it's called. The course is called Sell your way to wealth, and for the most part, anybody who's ever created wealth, or most of the people who created the biggest wealth in the history of the world, have created that wealth through selling. So, so sell your way to wealth. This course is regularly is regularly one hundred and ninety seven dollars, and it's got five audios. That's five audios, and those five audios go directly, uh, you can access them directly online. As soon as you make your purchase, you'll go on, you'll create a username, you'll create a username and a password, and you'll create a password, and you'll have instant access to that course right now. It's five modules. And these, these, these five modules will t take you through um, Sell Your Way to Wealth lead generation, Sell Your Way to Wealth pres presentation, Sell Your Way to Wealth closing, Sell Your Way to Wealth overcoming objections, everything you need to know in the arena of sales. And I promise you, it's not some rehashed sales material that you've heard before. These are the exact principles that I have used to make millions of dollars. In fact, I, 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 I wanted to see if this is only something I could do or can other people do this as well. And I went to an event in Dallas one time. There were 250 people there. 
and and those 250 people were all supposed to be selling their goods and services to the other people in the room. And there was a contest. They broke us up into four teams, and each team had about the same number of people in it. And, and at the end of the event, they tallied up all the sales from all the teams to see who had sold what, and our team sold the most. Our team sold over. Our team sold over. In that, in that three-day event, our team sold over 18 thousand dollars worth of goods and services to the other people that were in that room to about 250 240 260 whatever it's just a little over 200 people we sold eighteen thousand dollars worth of goods and services is that good that's not good that's incredible okay now we sold those goods and services to the people in the room eighteen thousand dollars worth now, you're probably thinking I'm going to say, well, I taught all those other people how to sell in three days. No, I didn't. I didn't teach them how to sell in three days. But of the 18,000 that we sold, of that, I sold 12,500 of it myself, which if you subtract that from that, that leaves 5,500 that the other 50 or 60 people on the team sold. I sold uh, $12,500 worth of the 18,500. So that's pretty cool, but that just shows that I can sell. Well, that's okay. So what I did was I came back and I taught it to two of my students. I taught it to a man, his name is Paul. I taught it to Paul and I taught it to a woman, her name is Tina. They went to the same event the following month in Salt Lake City, Utah. There were 30 people there, it was a small event. I guess they had just started doing it there. And they came in first and second place at that event. Paul sold $6,000 worth of stuff at that event. Tina sold $8,000 worth of stuff at that event. They were number one and two salespeople by far. They sold $14,000. Two of my students sold $14,000 worth of goods and services at that event. It doesn't matter what you sell. If you sell real estate, if you sell cars, if you sell um, insurance, if you sell network marketing, if you sell door-to-door uh, cleaning materials, if you sell knives, it does not matter. If you sell investments, if you're a financial uh, services person, it doesn't matter. If you are the, the service advisor at a car dealership and you sell automo- automobile service, it doesn't matter. If you use my selling process, because understand that selling anything, if you do it the right way in the way that works best, it's always going to be a process. It is not going to be an event. And one of the biggest challenges people have in the arena of selling, they attempt to turn selling into an event, an event, and selling is a process. And if you go through the steps of the process, the process will make the sales for you. You don't have to make the sales.